Hi right, y'all, so you like me and have a bunch of stuff hanging from the back of your bathroom door. So let me tell you what happens is that these hinges right here, the door tends to pull them away from the base and you get a big gap. So I'm going to show you what I do to fix it. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to take the, the chopstick and I'm going to remove a lot of the outside layer. Sometimes there's a, a lacquer or a shininess or just from manufacturing the chopstick, you wanna have a rough surface so that some pores open up so that the glue can get into the, the pores of the bamboo. And I recommend a bamboo chopstick because there's fibers inside the bamboo that tend to hold a lot better from pulling out as it expands into the hole. The bamboo absorbs more glue. Now, when you use a softer wood, some of the other videos online, they use a golf tee, and that wood tends to be pretty soft. It also is coated with a paint. So when you put the glue on it, and you're sticking it in there, it doesn't absorb into the wood. It doesn't have the same holding properties. We wanna prop the door up. So I used a bucket and a vacuum cleaner and a chisel underneath the edge of the door to lift the door up so that when I screw everything in that it's perfectly fitted with the frame of the door so that I don't have the door cockeyed to the new side by tightening it down. I also had to figure out what kind of screws that I wanted to use. Not all screws are the same. I use these construction screws. The screw bit that I use or even if you're using a screwdriver you want it to fit really well into the, the head of the screw. If it doesn't fit in really well, it'll strip the insides of the screw and then it causes a lot of problems. So, so you have to make sure that you have the best fitting screwdriver for the head of the screw so that you don't strip out the screw and then cause more problems when you have to remove the stripped out screw. Another thing that I know is that not everybody has construction adhesive or a really good glue like liquid nails and you have no choice but to use a wood glue. It's kind of ridiculous to go out and buy a whole tube of construction adhesive. I haven't been able to find smaller tubes of construction adhesive. Usually it's wood glue, super glue. The Gorilla Glue has this, they are sold in the smaller tubes. And they're like six bucks, which isn't bad, but it's kind of overkill for fixing a door, buying a $15 tube of construction adhesive, or in this case it was liquid nails, just to put a door hinge in. So you can use wood glue or some other kind of glue that's less expensive like a Gorilla Glue because you can get the smaller bottle and you're not spending so much just to fix your door. I use construction adhesive quite a bit for a lot of things that I fix around the house and I prefer having construction adhesive over just the regular wood glues and the Gorilla Glue. I've seen the construction glue, when used with wood, it holds stronger than the wood. So if you have a break, as long as you have a little bit of squeeze out so that when you're putting the glue on something else that it's so much glue in there that it squeezes it out and then you can wipe down the excess, that it holds stronger than the original one put together. Keep it from drying out. Unfortunately, some, most of the time it ends up drying out and I have a hard time getting the nail out. And then if I do get the nail out, there's so much dried adhesive inside of the tube. I have to use a screw to work out the other, the dried adhesive from inside. And sometimes that doesn't always work. So I end up having to cut open or break open the tip just to get the adhesive out. And once you do that, that starts to dry and then the whole tube is kind of 
useless and has to be thrown away. After I get the wood in there and break off the chopstick, I noticed that when I was breaking off the chopstick that it was breaking off more of the chopstick on the inside and less on the outside so I decided to take a chisel or a knife. You can use anything and then use a hammer to cut it off and put the edge up against it and slice it off. By slicing it off there's more material left on the inside that's going to give your screw more material to expand into to create a nice tight hold onto the onto the door jam. When you have the chopstick usually the tip of the chopstick isn't going to go all the way through so you I split the chopstick into small slivers and then put glue on the slivers and then stick the entire chopstick into the hole with the glue and then break the end off and I found it's better to have three or four slivers of glue covered chopstick pushed into the hole and then broken off than it is to have one big piece like the golf tee. It doesn't hold as strong. The baseboard that the hinge is going into, it tends to only be about a half an inch deep. So even though you're, I'm putting glue on the wood or bamboo, even though I'm putting wood on a four or five inch piece of glue and sticking it in there into the hole and breaking it off, there's only a small portion of the entire piece that's getting stuck in there but again I'm trying to create that squeeze out or that overflow which will dry around the outsides as I push it in and drive the screw in it'll push the extra adhesive on the inside of the door it's going to push the glue out around the outside so that it's going to have a better bond it's creating a larger surface area that the new screw is getting driven into I've seen some videos that use Gorilla Glue and what I found with the problem with Gorilla Glue is that when you stick the wood into the hole the Gorilla Glue tends to expand and if you use too much or the wood is cracked and old as the glue expands it splits the wood all the way down and I've had a few problems with that in the past where it just ends up splitting the wood and then I have to separate the wood and re-glue the wood together and the Gorilla Glue doesn't tend to hold the wood as well as a construction adhesive. I've used wood glue before too and wood glue works pretty well. We find that wood glue tends to harden over time and it doesn't stay as flexible. The glue is so hard that the screw will work its way out from continual use and it tends to lose its holding properties. I also found out that the surface of my door jam at the bottom wasn't completely flush with the surface of the edge of the door the, the rest of the door jam so that hinge was actually pushed out a little bit because there was the wood on the inside wasn't shaved down enough even though I had so much weight on that door it wasn't holding that hinge in tightly so I had to use my chisel to shave off a fair amount of wood just just enough to get that hinge to close tight and by having that chisel and bucket and vacuum cleaner to hold that door up I was able to continue mating it up against the surface and removing enough material until I found the right fit without having to have someone hold the door or fighting with the door to to keep checking the the fit of the door and you notice my screw heads it's important to uh, check the screw heads and line them up together to make sure that they're exactly the same size if they're too big the hinge isn't going to close all the way and if they're too small when you drive them in it's not going to have a nice surface area to hold the hinge in place and you kind of want a good surface area holding that hinge in place And then I use a hammer with a screw to create a little indentation so when I drive my screw in even though I shaved off the end of the stick that I jammed in there it still had a little bit of a nub to where the the screw itself wasn't 
driving directly straight into it and still coming in at an angle besides the one hole that had the broken screw in it. So I, I used the hammer and a nail to create a pilot hole so that it could drive the screw in into the right spot. And then another mistake that I made, which I probably don't recommend is towards the end when I was finishing tightening it using that drill, it'll end up stripping the screw inside and I have to add more glue and jam another stick in there and start over again or more than one sticks to fill the hole that I made to drive a new screw in there. So I actually did it more than once. I used that drill to tighten the screw in there and over tightened it because it was turned up too high. It's good to use the drill to get the screw started but when, once you want to tighten the screw down it's better to do it by hand so you can feel exactly how much pressure you're putting that screw in without stripping out the wood of the hole that you just filled. I used my electric screwdriver to remove the old screws and I found that one of the screws was actually broken inside of the hole and I couldn't get that screw out so I had to try to put glue on the chopstick that I split open and pushed it into the hole and get my new screw to go straight into the hole. I found that as I was drilling the screw into the hole the screw was coming in at an angle and then the the head of the screw wasn't flush so that when you shut the door it, the other end of the hinge was hitting up against the back head of the other screw so you want to make sure that your screws go in exactly straight the head of the screw is flush with the hinge so when the other side comes against it that it can close perfectly tight 